Are we live? We're back! Guys, welcome to yet another episode of the 8020 Drummer. This is the lesson of the week. I'm Nate, by the way. Uh, yeah, so 8020 Drummer, drums, knowledge, stuff. If you're interested in getting more, <whistles> subscribe button. Imagine if you subscribed that far into the lesson. Like, what have I done already that you're like, oh, this is going to be good. But it will be good. Trust me, brothers and sisters. So... How did we arrive at today's lesson? Today's lesson is going to be a nine beat pattern and we might as well just get into it. Let me show it to you. So how do we know that's nine beats? It's because if we take away the double on the bass on the kick drum, It sounds like country, right? But as soon as you add that double kick, then it gets interesting. So, my first and favorite application for this is over the top of sextuplets. Because it's a nine beat phrase, it's going to cycle really naturally over the top of sextuplets. So let me show you that. If you imagine like three, four. So that is a that makes a three beat phrase that cycles over the top of the sextuplets. Let me keep eighth notes with the hats so you can hear that even more clearly. So three, four. So Obviously, you can orchestrate this any way you want, but let me give you my favorite couple. Obviously, where I'm starting is on the snare drum with the accents with the right hand and the ghosted notes with the left hand. So that'll just sound like three, four. And I'm doing it that way so that when it's transcribed for you, you have a natural way for it to come back around on to the one. So you're learning it, keeping the one with the beat in mind. So from this, obviously, the next spot you can go is moving the right hand. And I'm, I've got the five piece here today, moving the right hand to various toms. So three, four. like that, right? So another thing I really like to do with this is to put the ghost notes on the hats. So that'll sound like this. Three, four. Okay, so you can, you can play around with this I, I recommend setting the metronome for a comfortable tempo once you've learned this and practiced permutating it a little bit, then try to get into it from improvising around some sextuplets. So three, four. So 
you can do that over six tuplets. You can practice that all day. And it's just a, a cool lick to throw in. So you can also play this over four, over sixteenths or eighths. So three and a four and a. It's a little bit harder to hear, and it's going to sound a little bit more angular. It's 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 a little more into the get you fired from gigs if the band needs to come in on the downbeat type of category. So I actually want to think about just let's take this shape and make other things that work well for it over 16ths. And the most basic shape, the thing that this all came from was just Right, so you've got And you can throw in doubles anywhere you want. So that's sort of how the nine beat thing came because you're alternating between a single kick and a double kick. So it's almost like an Ari Honig thing maybe when I was, when I was first thinking about this. Like Ari Honig is, is famous for doing like nine and 17 beat patterns because he'll just, he'll do something that, that grids up with 16 notes but then he'll just shift it over one. So it's, you know. Like that's in my coaching course, right? And the reason I do that is we're practicing these new rudiments and I want you guys to be able to be comfortable feeling those on any part of the beat because just like in a fight, you might end up displaced by a 16th and you don't want to panic and, and lose the band. You want to be able to, to keep it cool and, and stay relaxed. But you can also use this concept just to improvise with. So rather than do some kind of really regular periodized Ari Honig type of stuff, Let's just play with that shape a little bit. So, end of foot, end of. Etc. So, the other thing you can do to vary this is. Right? So. And that lets you make shapes like. And the other variation is just. So ages ago, I did this. I did this lesson that was deconstructing sort of the Chris Coleman canon and these combinations that, for a minute before that channel rendered themselves obsolete, people were calling gospel chops. And it's the same thing. It's this concept of like two over one, two over two, one over two. It's just a different way into that. It's all just shapes you can make with your body. So. So let's take those, those shapes. So. And. And. And just give ourselves these two variations of ghosts on the snare drum in the center of the snare drum and also on the hats and just improvise with that a little bit. The end of four, the end of. Etc. So, well, this sound like a little faster. Again, it's it's a way to. This is a particular sound. It's kind of that Garibaldi, Vinny, Thomas Pridgen sound, where it comes a little more out of jazz, and you've got this connective tissue on the snare drum, putting stuff together. That's it's sort of my favorite sound, as opposed to the just pure combination sort of Chris Coleman stuff. Which, but I'm working on those two. Yeah, but let's uh, let's play around with this a little bit. <clears throat> Three, four.
So again, this is just another way into soloing. Hopefully it gives you guys some new ideas to play with. And as always, try to, once you've got those under your hands, incorporate them into sort of a more pure improvisation context. Practice just improvising with them and then going in and out of them. And then also practice trading uh, against a beat with them. So dudes, hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you've been enjoying the channel, if you feel like maybe you might be ready to go a little deeper, if you feel like maybe you might be ready to study with me, I recommend my perennial product, the 8020 coaching course, which is like six months to a year of studying with me for around the price of a single lesson. We only open that up a few times a year, but if you want to get on the wait list for when the coaching course opens up and also get a gateway drug into what my more sort of sequenced organized instruction looks like completely free, I recommend you check out the link below the video player, click down there, Go to the next page, enter your email address. I'll send you three videos to make your playing better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the last six months. I know once you see that those, you'll be even more motivated to uh, trust me for all your drum instructional needs. So, Nate from 8020, once again, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. We'll see you back here real soon for another lesson of the week.